How many sailors, how many captains, who joyous set off on distant courses, only to fade into nothing on this somber horizon. Augustin Fresnel was neither a sailor nor a captain. He was not familiar with the domain, and yet he contributed a lot to it. He wasn't a sailor, but an engineer and physicist. He joined École Polytechnique at the age of 16 and returned as a professor later in life. He started off his career as an engineer. He was appointed to the region of Grom, where he worked on road construction. But during his free time, he devoted himself to a totally different subject, which ended up constituting his life's work, optics. His first feat of strength was achieved by tackling Newton's theories of light head on. And attempting to contradict the man who discovered the law of gravity was no trivial matter. Fresnel, contrary to Newton, did not believe that light was made up of particles, but rather that it was a wave. A complex argument, but an essential one, and for which there is some very simple proof. If light were a particle, then it would quite naturally follow that the shadow of a disk would be disk-shaped. On the other hand, if light were a wave, the disk would disrupt the light's passage, resulting in a spot of light appearing in the middle of the disk. It seems counterintuitive, but there you go. It's the truth. There is light right in the middle of a shadow. Just a tiny flash, but proof all the same that light is more complicated than what people had thought up to then. Fresnel made his reputation. He reigned supreme over the field of light and optics, and for this reason became appointed to the Lighthouse Commission. As a matter of fact, lighthouses at the time didn't really light up very much. Fresnel, now a renowned physicist, donned his engineer uniform once again and got to work on the problem. With the assistance of an extremely talented artisan, Jean-Baptiste Soleil, he made lighthouses shine brighter than ever before. Fresnel and Soleil created extremely fine lenses, which kept all the converging properties of thicker lenses, but were much brighter. They carried out a test on the Arc de Triomphe, and the light was visible up to 32 kilometers from the location. The experiment was a success. The first of these sectioned lenses was installed at the Cordouan Lighthouse, at the mouth of the Gironde estuary, and tens more followed, all throughout France and overseas. These Fresnel lenses, as they came to be known, have prevented countless shipwrecks. Today, lighthouses have changed. They are electric, motorized, and automatic. But the Fresnel lens has remained the same. No one has been able to better it. And they are used for other applications. Look in the supermarket with those devices that make sure customers haven't left anything in their shopping cart. Merci. Fresnel lenses. At the back of the bus, these same devices allow the driver to check blind spots. This same technology that uses the properties of light refraction keeps finding itself in our everyday lives. Fresnel made his mark on science and engineering, but he succumbed to tuberculosis at the age of 39. A few days before his death, François Arago presented him with the Rumford Medal. Handing him his prize, Arago said, the whole world recognizes the importance of your work. Your name shall never die. <laughs>